In this training, we will cover the basics of globe valves, how to size a globe valve, the Honeywell V5011, V5013, VGF, and V58 globe valves, actuators and linkages, ordering from Honeywell, and installation tips. Globe valves get their name from the spherical shape of the valve body. Some globe valves are more spherical than others, however, all of them have a plug that closes off against the valve seat. Here's a cutaway of a V5011 globe valve. The stem is the shaft that connects the valve actuator to the disc. The disc contacts the valve seat to close off flow. Some valve assemblies are built so the disc is replaceable, or the disc may be a machined segment of the brass plug, as in this example. The disc will close off against the valve seat. This seat may be a machined part of the valve body, or it can be a replaceable valve seat as depicted here. Attached to the disc is a valve plug. As the stem moves up and down, these components vary the fluid flow through the valve body. The components that are in contact with the fluid are called the trim, but the trim of the valve does not include the valve body. The bonnet screws to the top of the valve body and contains the packing that seals and guides the valve stem. And lastly, the connection ports, or fittings, allow the valve to be connected into the system piping. The connection might be pipe threads, sweat soldered, or flange bolted. The actuator, not pictured here, moves the stem based on an electric or pneumatic signal from the controller. Globe valves are available as two-way control valves or three-way mixing and diverting valves. In a two-way valve, fluid enters one port and exits out the other port. The size of the opening between the valve ports controls how much the fluid will exit the valve. Three-way valves may be mixing or diverting. With mixing valves, fluid enters from ports A and B, mixes together, then exits out the AB port. With diverting valves, the fluid enters the AB port and is diverted proportionally into ports A and B based on the position of the stem. Unlike a ball valve or a butterfly valve, where the piping arrangements determine whether the valve is mixing or diverting, a globe valve is designed for each application. Therefore, it is critical to select the right valve for each application. All mixing globe valves offered by Honeywell are stem up to close between A to AB. As you can see, when the stem moves up, the plug will seal off A to AB. As the stem moves down, it will close off B to AB. For diverting globe valves, stem up closes ports B to AB. When the stem moves up, the plugs will move up and close off port B to AB, and at the same time open A to AB. Mixing valves are considered as temperature control devices. They mix inlets A and B into a common outlet, AB. In this coil bypass application, the hot water supply travels either through the coil or around the coil. Diverting valves have one inlet port, AB, and divert to two separate outlet ports, A or B. The valve stroke determines which. They're considered as volume control devices in this coil application. In this coil bypass diagram, the hot water supply is diverted either through the heating coil or back to the hot water source, such as the boiler. Three-way valves are used for a variety of reasons. In these examples, they are controlling the flow to a coil while controlling the system pressure. Water is distributed through the building under high pressure. If we throttle back on the flow with regular two-way valves, very high head pressures would develop, resulting in loss of control and damaged equipment. These diagrams show how the water flows either through the coil or around it. Thus, when the system is properly balanced, the pressure in the system will not change as the three-way valves modulate. A two-way glow valve may be direct acting or reverse acting. Direct acting valves close when the stem is pushed down. In this diagram, you can see the stem is up and the valve is open. Pushing down on the stem will close the valve. A reverse acting valve will open when the stem is pushed down. In this example, the valve is open when the stem is down. When the stem is pulled up, the valve closes and the flow stops. 
It is important not to confuse the terms direct and reverse acting with the terms normally open and normally closed. Many actuators have an unpowered position that is held by a spring or other means. Then under power, they move to the other position. These are called fail-safe. Other actuators simply power one direction or the other and have no spring return to return them to a certain position. They are called non-fail-safe. Normally open or closed is determined by the combination of a direct acting or reverse acting valve with an actuator that spring returns one direction or the other. Let's take a look now at how we configure the normal position based on the valve and actuator. When using a direct acting valve with a direct acting actuator that is failsafe closed, the valve becomes normally open. A reverse acting valve with a direct acting actuator will make the valve normally closed. A reverse acting actuator and a direct acting valve will make the valve normally closed. And a reverse acting actuator with reverse acting valve will make the valve normally open. An easy way to remember this is whenever the actuator and valve have the same action, either both direct acting or reverse acting, the valve will be normally open. If the action of the actuator and valve are opposite, then the valve will be normally closed. To help illustrate this, let's review a cutaway diagram of a valve and an actuator that shows the relationship between a valve and an actuator with the same versus opposite action. As you can see on the left, both the direct acting valve and actuator will result in a normally open valve because without applying pressure to the actuator, the natural force of the spring is holding the stem and the plug up, keeping the valve in the open position. When pressure is applied, the force will push the diaphragm down against the spring. This will force the spring to compress and exert a downward force that pushes the valve plug down to close the valve. On the right side of the diagram, a direct acting valve with a reverse acting actuator has the natural spring force exerting downwards, thereby keeping the plug down and the valve closed. When actuator pressure is applied, the force will push the diaphragm upwards, pulling the valve stem and plug up. As the plug goes up, the valve opens. All the Honeywell Glow valves are ANSI class valves. ANSI refers to the American National Standards Institute. The ANSI class rating for valves can be 125, 150, 250, or even above. These different class ratings refer to the range of pressure and temperature levels that the valve body, including the flanges and fittings, must meet. This graph shows the temperature and pressure relationships between the different ANSI class ratings. If we look at a valve rated for ANSI class 150, then at, let's say, 200 degrees, the valve body is rated to handle a system pressure of 250 psi. In general, pressure rating increases as temperature falls. While NC class 125 and 150 ratings are the pressure and temperature ratings for a valve, the NC class seat leakage ratings specify the allowable leakage that can occur through a closed valve. The table on the right summarizes the different leakage class ratings. The maximum leakage allowable for each class varies. For example, a class 3 rated valve can handle fluid leakage up to 0.1% of the valve's rated CV between the ports when closed. All Honeywell valves are rated to either class 3 or class 4. When talking about the seat leakage rating is generally done in respect to the close-off pressure. The close-off pressure is the maximum pressure that the valve can close off against and maintain the closed position without allowing more leakage than its ANSI class leakage rating. Flow characteristics refers to how the flow changes as the valve opens and closes. On the linear flow characteristic, you can see that as the valve opens, the fluid flow increases the same amount. For example, if the valve opens 40%, the flow through the valve will be 40% of the maximum. 
This direct linear relationship is what makes it ideal for chilled water and steam system applications for optimal control of a space. Some glow valves are linear opening valves. Equal percentage flow characteristic is a little different. Each increment in valve opening increases the flow rate by a certain percentage of the previous flow. Another way to think about this is equal increments of valve opening produces an equal percentage change in the existing flow rate. This relationship is exponential and is described by a curved line on the graph and is ideal for modulating heating applications. Some glow valves are equal percentage opening valves. As we have covered in the commercial control valve fundamentals video, valve by nature creates some resistance to flow. This can be measured by the pressure drop across the valve. Flow coefficient, or CV, is a measure of this pressure drop. It is the flow in gallons per minute through a valve at a 1 psi pressure drop. With valves used for modulating or proportional control, it is critical to select the correct CV in order to have good temperature control. If the CV is too large, the valve will operate most of its time at a very small opening and can result in cavitation that can damage the valve and very poor control. If the CV is too small, it may not provide enough flow to the application, resulting in insufficient heating or cooling. To properly size the valve, it should have about the same pressure drop as the coil it controls. To do this, calculate the CV by plugging in the GPM through and the pressure drop across the coil. The mathematical equation for CV is shown here where Q is the rate of flow in gallons per minute. The delta P is the pressure drop between the inlet and outlet port, and the P divided by P is the density or a specific gravity of the media. Since these are HVAC applications, the media is probably water with a specific gravity of one, so this drops away from the equation. This leaves the CV equation to be the flow rate in GPM divided by the square root of the pressure drop. If the pressure drop is unknown, you can use some rules of thumb. 3 to 5 psi is often assumed for small to medium sized coils. To make the math easy, you may use 4 psi as the pressure drop and estimate the CV by taking the flow rate in GPM and dividing it by 2. To calculate the CV for a steam application, this equation is used. But often you may consult the building specs and replace the valve like for like. Still, it is good to verify that the valve is sized correctly for each application. An oversized valve may open only slightly, resulting in cavitation and result in damage called wire draw. To learn how to size steam valves, consult the Honeywell Gray Manual. It is available at customer.honeywell.com and in an interactive HTML format at buildingcontrolworkbench.com. Honeywell offers a full portfolio of two-way and three-way glow valves from one-half to six inches. These glow valves can be used in both HVC water and steam applications. There are two main categories of glow valves, the threaded and the flanged. Let's take a closer look at each of these. The V5011 two-way and V5013 three-way valves are Honeywell's threaded glow valves. These have ANSI class 150 pressure and temperature body ratings. They also have ANSI class 3 close-off readings. ANSI class 3 allows for up to 0.1% of CV leakage. However, these valves actually are rated to 0.05% leakage, which makes them not too far away from the ANSI class 4 ratings of 0.01% CV. The two-way glow valves are available from 1 half inch to 3 inches and as direct acting with equal percentage flow and direct acting with linear flow characteristics or as reverse acting with equal percentage flow characteristics. Both brass and stainless steel trim options are also available for two-way glow valves. The three-way mixing glow valves come with brass trim and like most three-way valves come with an equal percentage flow in port A and a linear flow in port B. Port B also has a 20% reduced CV compared to the A port. It is important to note that the V5013 three-way glow valves can only be used in mixing applications and not diverting.
For larger applications, Honeywell offers VGF series. VGF stands for flanged globe valves. The VGF valves are available from 2.5 inches to 6 inches with both two-way and three-way ports. The two-way models are available with either ANSI Class 125 or Class 250 valve body versions. The two-way models are available with either linear or equal percentage flow characteristics. The S and the P in the part number specifies if the valve is a standard model or a pressure balanced model. The pressure balanced models have a unique internal design that allows for higher close-off pressure and better ANSI Class C leakage rating. The higher close-off capability makes these pressure balanced models ideal for a central plant chiller application. The three-way models are also available with either ANSI Class 125 or ANSI 250 and come in sizes from 2.5 to 6 inches. Both ANSI Class 125 and 250 models offer an ANSI Class 3 seat leakage rating with various close-off ratings depending on the actuator model used. There are models available for mixing and for diverting applications. Honeywell glow valves can be controlled either with an electric actuator or a pneumatic actuator. When an electric actuator is used, it may either be a linear actuator or a rotary direct coupled actuator with linkage. Both options offer fail in place or fail safe options. Fail safe refers to the actuator's ability to return to its normal position when the actuator is no longer powered. For more information, refer to the Global Field Device Application and Selection Guide Catalog for number 63-9271 for a complete list of actuators and valves that are compatible. An online version of the catalog is also available on the customer.honeywell.com website under Support and Resources. Honeywell's newest linkage is the Q5024. This retrofit linkage fits most manufacturers' glow valves in the field from 1 half to 6 inches, with no valve disassembly required. This linkage is easy to install, and the wide variety of color combinations available allows it to fit almost all glow valves. Single or dual mount actuator linkage options are available to offer a torque from 44 inch pounds to 600 inch pounds. The Q5024 is a great way to modernize an existing valve. If you have an old valve that works fine, now you can drive it with a direct couple actuator and control it with a modern building automation system. Honeywell also offers configure to order glow valve and actuator assemblies. These valve assemblies are available with over 60 different types of actuators, including linear pneumatic and electric actuators, and rotary direct couple actuators with linkages. The assembly numbers are built based on the specifications of the valve, actuator, and linkage, if a rotary actuator. This enables you to mix and match valve and actuators to create the combination you need. Select a valve, actuator, and linkage, and fail-safe combination, then combine them to build a configured assembly number. These valve and actuator assemblies also include free custom tagging. The configured assembly numbers might be too many characters and not work for some distributor systems, so we offer short order codes that can be used in place of the configured assembly numbers. Also, each character of the short order code corresponds to a certain characteristic of the valve and valve assembly. For more information on the different valve and actuator combinations that can be ordered as assemblies, refer to the Global Field Device Application and Selection Guide or the Fast Track Tool. Fast Track is a project management tool that can help you create a valve and actuator schedule with prices and custom tags. These schedules can then be sent directly to Honeywell for ordering. To download the latest version of FastTrack, visit customer.honeywell.com slash go slash FastTrack. FastTrack is also available as an app in the App Store and Google Play Store for iPads and Android tablets. In addition to the V5011 and VGF valves, Honeywell also offers a line of cost-effective cartridge glow valves designed specifically for modulating unitary equipment. These compact two- and three-way valves are available from one-half inch to inch and a half with sweat and NPT port connections. The actuators are pneumatic or electric. With the electric actuator, you have a choice of fail-in-place or fail-safe operation. Unlike the standard glow valve, V58 series glow valves are designed specifically for hot and chilled water applications 
and should not be used on Steam applications. A cartridge glow valve is a type of glow valve, so it is very good at controlling the flow in modulating applications. The V58 series glow valves are very easy to service. The cartridge replaces a number of individual components on the stem into a one-piece device that can easily be replaced when the valve is serviced. This is easier and saves time. Remember to use these glow valves only on closed systems. And also that the V5011, V5013, and VGF valves can be used on hot or chilled water as well as steam. But the V58 is for hot and chilled water systems only. In addition, foreign objects like metal chips, solder, and scale, and other debris can damage the stem seals and result in stem leakage. Good installation practice begins with a system flush and water treatment. For filtration, Honeywell recommends a 50 micron or finer side stream system filter. In addition, Honeywell strongly recommends a 20 mesh Y strainer upstream of each valve. Remember to remove all filters and screens prior to flushing. These precautions can save a lot of expense and downtime if materials prevent a valve from operating, especially if that valve is difficult to access. When using a glycol mixture to condition the water and prevent freezing, make sure the concentration of glycol to water is no more than 50%. Also be sure to notice the direction arrow on the valve. It is important to have the flow in this direction for proper control especially at near closed positions, and also to avoid the possibility of valve damage. Glow valves are a good choice for a variety of AHU applications with closed loop systems. What makes the Honeywell V5011 and VGF glow valve unique is that they are constructed with a material that allows them to be used in both steam and water applications. When mounting glow valves for steam applications, it is critical to mount them on the horizontal run at the highest point in the piping and never in the vertical piping. Condensation in steam pipes will drip downwards and will lock up and damage the valve if it is mounted vertically or low in the piping system. When sizing glow valves for steam applications, always size from the CV. Do not oversize the valve as this will cause wire draw. Wire draw occurs when the valve disc operates close to the shutoff point of the valve much of the time and the steam flow erodes a pathway into the CD material that remains when the valve closes to the shut-off position. These marks will allow small flows to leak through the valve in the closed position. You can prevent wire draw by properly sizing a steam valve. This usually means the control valve is smaller than the line size, so the valve does not operate exclusively at the low end of the valve stroke. But sometimes the range and operation are required varies so much that you can't prevent it from operating at the low end of the stroke much of the time. To alleviate this, it is common to size and pipe according to the one-third, two-third rule. The one-third, two-third rule is the use of two valves piped in parallel, where one valve is sized to one-third of the total capacity, and the other valve is sized to handle the remaining two-thirds of the total capacity. When the system needs less than 33% of the total CV, only the one-third CV valve will respond to the control signal. When the system calls for 33% to 67% of the total CV, the one-third CV valve will close, while the two-thirds CV valve will open. When the demand of the system is greater than 67% of the total CV, both valves will open to satisfy the system. This sequence of operation helps prevent wire draw in either valve. This concludes Honeywell Control Ball Valve Training. For additional information, check out these sales tools from the buildingcontrols.honeywell.com or customer.honeywell.com websites. In this training, we will cover the basic...